I actually have a, an announcement to make. Ooh. So, um, that was actually my last games with Team Liquid. And that could be exciting to, to some people or very bad news for a lot of Team Liquid fans. But I wanted them to hear it from me. There we go. So, like, when did you hear about it, the move? I saw the article um, you talked about, like, the practice, right? I'll turn you up yeah, here, actually. Yeah, I talked about the practice. And I talked about um, there was actually a trade, too, that was discussed way back uh, in the summer. For OC, um, right? For OC, yeah. So that was that was part of the deal. Um, What's a pew beautiful that, man? Uh, I was in the exploratory stage that when the Colossus was building. Sorry, I'll turn my mic up even more. Turn get, up, bro. Oh, no, I, I can I turn it up. Um, so I, it was an exploratory stage when they were building the Colossus. Um, they wanted to get twist. They would trade OC kind of made sense. They need, they really needed an opera. Um, but like from, that's from when they were still sold on Stewie being the IGL still. So they were focused yes. on OC. Yeah. Yes. So they were doing a little bit back and forth there. Um, nothing really came of it. They were still sticking out with the thing. Cloud nine, obviously doing different directions and things were just going on. So everyone kind of held in a holding pattern um then october comes around and uh twist was taking a break like an unrelated uh just break to stop grinding so much yeah like mental and fatigue they had type stuff. absolutely absolutely and that's when fallen came in um to just kind of scream with them to help keep practice going to keep it up um which is what i was told now could it have been that he was there to actually practice to Thanks. to completely replace with maybe but from from what i was told it was um it was just that. It was just like, hey, he's just practicing, trying to fill it out. I think it's a good so, fit, though, from like a theory crafting standpoint, right? Oh, absolutely. Stewie's I think we just been, I mean, about it. Like, Stewie's been opping, IGLing, entry. Like, it's, he has like every role except for the human aimbot role, which is obviously yeah. covered by the rest of his team. But yeah. I don't think it's a bad move on like paper. Oh, yeah. It's going to be a very expensive experiment, though. It's going to be, yeah, I, I can't imagine. I don't. I don't know if it's going to be that expensive. You think so? You, well, I don't. So well, I couldn't get. Fallen wasn't getting much interest then when he left MIBR. If it's not that so expensive, Fallen was getting. Fallen had a lot of interest, right? We know that Fallen has a lot of offers. He had EU offers. He's had NA offers. He's had the Brazilian offers. Like he's AFL been a high profile much love. target. Haven't a lot of missed people a stream in eight months. Is, smile. How much are people willing to pay for him? Yeah, is another question, right? Because you can have a lot of offers and you can have a lot of interest, but given COVID, given the recession, given kind of everything that's happening right now, you don't actually. Not a lot of orgs are able to go out and spend a lot of money. So to get Fallen, what do you really, really uh, need to ask back in return? Um, I don't think that it'll be a crazy high buyout. I think it just from what I understand, it probably is going to end up being something like, I don't know, maybe 100000 I think would probably be a fair price for Fallen. Now, for people um, that don't know this... buyouts, give somebody, give my chat some context. Because you're talking to me, but give con. let's see, who is the most recent buyout? <laughs> That so Nico, Nico, yeah, Nico was really was, high. Nico, Nico was well was over five hundred thousand. Yeah, it was like rumor. He's like seven hundred and fifty thousand, right? I think right. it was like the rumor. Yeah, so yeah, like, seven hundred fifty thousand. There, you have Brazilian other Brazilian players under contract or a couple hundred thousand. So like a hundred thousand for Fallen is actually a little bit of a discount um, for being on the bench, um, for being someone that has underperformed uh, and kind of doesn't really have a direct clear path going somewhere else. I mean, we had reports that he was going to join other Brazilian teams. Um, so kind of all of those factors kind of like the really boom, are driving that the price boom down. move or whatever, right? The boom, the boom project was one. Um, yeah. I was a little surprised actually when I heard that Fallen was coming on, um, into this, into Team Liquid, um, because I thought he was, he was really going there. But I've had this, I've had this information for a couple of days at this point. Um, and it's been just kind of like a back and forth in terms of yep, cock. when should I release it? What's right to do? X, Y, you know, and, and, uh, and yeah. So do you know if Twist so Twist is known for a little while based on how you phrased it in the article and, and like what you said as and he's yeah. staying in EU. Now I think that was an interesting personal, thing that he said. That's, that's that's personal stuff, obviously that isn't any of our business. I think he's in a relationship, if I'm not mistaken. I think he is too. With so somebody if, that lives if, in Europe, so that might be a driving factor. I was just curious if he knew if he had any offers, or since people knew he was on the way out, probably <laughs> behind the scenes. I would I would say for him making the very public statement that he's staying in EU. We just have to look at um, potential EU teams that maybe are going through shuffles that are English speaking that could bring him on. I mean, you, 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 I think he's going to get offers. I think it's going to be a thing. 
Um, it's just kind of a question of like what team. Well, he was what ninth in 2018 or 2019. Right, or? exactly. Yeah, he's so, yeah. he's a good player. He's a very yeah, very yeah. good he player. He had a really just bad kind of year. What's going on? He had a bad year, and being brutally honest, Grim has out completely outshined him since they brought Grim onto the roster, and they play very similar like roles. I, I talked about this a lot on my stream, which is they had three of the same players. Arguably four when you consider how passive Naf is like and you just basically had the one aggressor Stewie So like bringing in somebody that takes the IGL role away from Stewie and You know, they haven't really had like a true opper, you know, Naf can op, Stu can op, Twist can op Fucking all of them can do it pretty much But right. I think having somebody that actually is you know, well versed with it. Although did you hear any rumblings that they even I'm kind of curious as an NA Fanboy, do you know <laughs> one of the one of the original NA NA uh, propagandists? <laughs> yeah, did uh did do you know of any rumblings if Liquid ever reached out to Vanity? Because I'm actually kind of curious on that. I think some um, people I saw a couple people asking in chat. I don't think that um, I think that they've they've evaluated a lot of options. I think that Liquid was looking at a ton of people. Like like I said, they looked at OC, right? When you're looking at OC, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, obviously you're looking at a lot of different things that can happen um, and, and a lot of different players. I know the Chaos players individually are some of the most sought after. It's just um, the players themselves want to stick together. They really, really want to stay together. Um, I don't know what yeah. Leaf's situation is also at the same time. I, uh, I, think I thought that Leaf, I thought that Leaf had joined cloud nine for valorant but i don't know a hundred percent i've established um, that that area is the wild west i've seen like four people yeah. have offers in front of them and the day before they sign i've seen them not maybe maybe getting swooped away isn't the right way to phrase it but the deal wasn't nearly as solidified as players think and to the people asking why not automatic in chat because they're looking to fill two roles they're looking to fill an opera role and the IGL role. So originally, when they believed yeah. in Stu as the main IGL, as Ryan just talked about, they wanted to pick up OC as just a pure opera. And that's because at that time, Automatic had way more, you know, he was locked down into Gen G. They had real stock as a, as a roster. I doubt they were going to make a move for Automatic when OC was a pretty viable option. And then to explain it further is, oh, yeah. I think now what Liquid has realized is... I think Stu is capable of an IGL, but you don't want him to be the IGL. You want him to be the second IGL slash entry man, space maker, wild card. You don't what, want to what put I that think, full weight. What I think that you really need, though, is you need a very big leadership role within that yeah. team, which is what you get with Fallen after Nitro has left, yeah. right? You get someone who's been around the block. They know what they're doing. You don't necessarily need Fallen's exact level of skill. To you don't go need ahead him to and, be... and control games. Yeah. You just need him to be able to help direct and help guide that team going forward. Because Moses was a good addition as being someone who's um, a senior figure. But to have someone that's actually going to be within the game itself and being able to, to help him go forward, um, I think that this might be one of the best situations that you can have. If, if I have yeah, on paper, come right? Up. Like, that's the, that's yeah. the thing. Is like on paper, I agree with you because they needed to remove the weight of the IGL off Stu, and they also needed a pure opper. Somebody that exactly. is comfortable picking it up every round, even if they're not having the best games, they're going to be super, you know, on point with, like, every... Like, it's just going to... It's going to fit well. It'll just be a matter of, do they buy in, and how do they work, like, as an actual team environment? Right. And, and I think it's... I think it's better that um, this team is kind of just gonna come together and it's and and <laughs> the official it should be as far as so i understand contracts have not been, been signed with fallen so yeah, that's that's yeah one i'm thing. sure he's but, got like 10 that he's just like looking at all of them right but this is very much this is much more closer than than um a normal report of saying that they're interested right like yeah i'm yeah. not made i this is the this is contracts there, are not signed but this is kind of yeah this is a formality is, yeah. is how it was described to me that fallen signing the contract should just be a formality it is 99 percent done um, now whether or not it's that 1% that gets over, I'm, I'm always anxious and nervous to see if it's true, but I think that, I think that it should happen. Um, and I think that there's just going to be a lot of stuff coming out over the next week and through the end of the year. Um, I would say maybe early January by January 1st is when we'll start to see like fallen being officially announced and stuff like that. 
maybe they're just doing programming and content and do it either they need to do in order to like make the real good announcement because yeah, this yeah, is going to be a big thing up. for them for brazil yeah oh yeah of course yeah this is a big so. thing and and i'm seeing some discussion on like steery and, and i've always i've always had to sit here and, and defend it because guys at the end of the day while twist might be statistically better or whatever there's Sisters don't tell the story it, you really like if you always use HLTV to determine who's off the team, like it's pretty easy to do of every team. It's like a very easy thing to do. You'd be like, oh, that guy doesn't get as many kills as the rest of the team. But what you don't realize is there are four players on that liquid roster today that probably were barely not not they're calming, but when things go poorly, the main voice of that team is Stewie. They don't that's bad. Like in those team environments, you, and that's why they steamroll so hard when they start playing well is as Stewie talked about and the rest of the team talked about is they start contributing, they start giving info, they start putting the game in motion before it even starts. And, but the problem is you need that all the time. You can't, you don't, there shouldn't be somebody that has to jumpstart the team every time. And when you have players like Twist, Alige, Grim, Naf, who are a bit more passive in nature and their personalities, where they would like somebody to basically tell them what to do, which is totally fine. But also, you need somebody to kind of alleviate the full IGL responsibility, which is really, really, really important. You don't, it, it, it's such an undervalued thing, and you can't see it on a stat sheet. You can't see the fact that Stewie dies most of the time. Like, yeah. he is the first guy that usually dies in a round for Team Liquid. But what you don't see is there's a guy named Alish and there's a guy named Grim or Twist right behind him who will go in there and grab two kills because Stewie went in there and died first. And when you go back and look at the game later and you're like, wow, they really struggled. And you see Stu at the bottom with like, you know, 20 deaths or something, 20 plus deaths and like 18 kills. Yeah, it doesn't look that pretty, but he's doing something that's extremely necessary for the team that nobody else does. They have a severe like identity problem. So you have to find the the problem with Liquid isn't a talent problem. Twist isn't bad. <laughs> nobody thinks Twist is bad. It's they don't have a large enough voice besides Stewie's and there's nobody there creating more space on the team and giving the team a real direction outside of Stewie, in my opinion. And that you can't see on a stat sheet. Exactly, exactly. There's a lot of there's a lot of different things that are happening, um, which I think are really important behind the scenes. I think they're really going to retool and, and get revitalized. Um, and I'm I'm really excited to see what they're going to do uh, heading into the future. I think it's really funny, by the way, that they thought my article was a joke at first. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I thought that was so funny. Bro, Loki, I thought you were baiting. I'll be honest. I'm not gonna lie. I. I when I when I was when I was told that it was fallen, I thought it was a joke too. I didn't think it was serious. Um, but I mean, that happened when I when I was told that fallen was practicing with liquid like back in October. I thought it was a joke. And and when I talked to people, they were like, "No, it's straight up just practicing." Yeah. Like, we'll let you know if things change, but no, like this is this is real. Um, and and yeah, and then well, twist, that's what happens twist. when you bait all the time, Ryan. You get called. It is. I understand. Shirt. Listen, I understand, but I've never baited an article. I've never no, baited I know, an article. I know. Oh, and so, I got a, here's so. a good question. So, new, yeah. uh, Nitro was enough to do it alone, but not Stewie. Yes. Yeah, so once again, this is this kind of proves my point in the weight more to Stewie, which a lot of people struggle with. Which is, at listen to Nitro's YouTube video, his first ever one that he posted. It was a full on in depth interview of his own time on Liquid and his transition to 100 Thieves on Valorant. One of the main voices of the roster besides Nitro and somebody that helped immensely and honestly most of the time would call a lot in the mid rounds was Stewie. Okay, so that doesn't mean Nitro wasn't the IGL, wasn't mean he wasn't capable of handling the roster on his own, but he had Stewie supporting him and when things got weird or tough, Nitro could lean and know that Stewie was always there, but the, the dynamic was and what made that roster so good is Stewie does get emotional sometimes. He's super invested and sometimes, yeah, he's not like fit to be the main IGL. And the reason why Nitro was so perfect in that roster for Liquid is he was the rock. He was absolutely the rock. Like if there was a round where maybe Stewie, yeah, like Stewie was making good calls, but he had a bad individual round or something or made a bad call and he wasn't feeling himself 100%, Nitro was always there as the calming voice to steer the ship. And would always be like 
yeah just the rock of the team and that dynamic was gone but that's why nitro and stewie work so well together so i don't really know how the dynamic will work with fallen and stewie but they've also been past teammates before don't forget they actually have a history and despite everybody that used to make fun of that mibr version with Tarek and Stu on it, people also seem to forget that Tarek and Stu while on that roster were basically the second most, you know, successful version of that roster because after Stu and Tarek left, that roster just slipped into further decline and into an absolute shit show. Like, it, it became awful. So, that that's kind of how I feel about it. Why did they get rid yeah. of Nitro then? They got rid of Nitro because their team was stale. Their team was stale and they couldn't figure it out. Like, and that's what teams do a lot of the time, whether it's fair or not. It's why I don't ever want to like pursue that kind of stuff ever again is when your team can't figure out what's going wrong. A lot of teams first instinct and, and to liquid's credit, they did try other things, right? They tried other things. They wanted to try different routes. They had Stu IGL while Nitro was still on the team, but at the, at the same time, just none of it was working. None of it was working. And that's pretty much it. <clears throat> yeah so and then i've had this you know what's even crazier is i've had this story confirmed since friday yeah no i mean i believe it the way <laughs> it was Twist it was brutal tweeted, the way he's kind of talked and tweeted about it or like vaguely does make it seem like there's something up a bit like he was kind of i don't know how to describe it like uh when he had that bad series like what was it three series ago or two series ago yeah together, you know somebody talks about you know, it, it, when somebody kind of talks the way that... It, I don't know how... It's, ah, fuck, I'm trying to think of the right phrasing. They say it in a certain manner. Yeah. Their vernacular like, and their language tells you... And their body like language like tells you a much like, larger... It's like somber. Yeah. Like, he, he, like, he's like, I know I can do better. I'm going to try to do better for the next series. But it almost seems like there's, like, you know, for an ending for something, you know? Yeah. So, it, it was... It's interesting. And then what's Pope, even crazy is how sucks, well Twist honestly performed knowing that this was his last yeah you um, gotta give him some game. well you could go with my theory which is because he knew he was on his way out he doesn't have that much that's what pressure. i was thinking too i'm watching it too and, and i i wanted to i wanted to not like have to distract the guys and i don't want to like create that kind of false media attention when the event's going on like it was no i think that was really really like that's hard for you because you're worried about somebody else pushing it out before you but at the same time you're not trying to make waves and like while you do have some privileged information i i think you did it well but it's like, it imagine imagine if I released it right before they're to about game? to go on oh, and play that Friday game, and then they lose that game. Oh, yeah. But in this alternate reality of me not releasing it, and then they win, it's like, did I, is it because I created so much more of a cloud of stuff and the community's talking like, like, he knew he was gone, but like, is it just the community reaction potentially even got in their heads? No, so yeah. I think yeah, that's, something I've, that's something I've more. recently really learned, um, and I'm, I'm going to be trying to like do that more in the future of just like not doing anything like it. it's better to lose it's uh, it, it'd be better to lose something rather than screw someone else up do no harm i am talking uh, to ryan at rushby media he's basically just a shit poster that event okay it's you can't do that you can't say that anymore when i break probably one of the biggest transfer roster moves of the year that's just not it's not call you are you poster. kidding me You're are you kidding me uh, do you know how stressed i was i'm the going past through five days i'll fucking go through your tweets right now <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't, don't, <laughs> Are you gonna go through my tweets on stream? We'll just That's go through brutal. all of them and Chad can tell me if you're a fucking shit poster or not. Like, how many times do you talk about Alu's balls? Like, <laughs> like, this dude's a shit poster, but every once in a while he'll release something that's worth talking about. Every once in a while. I think, I think you embody the NA scene very well as a quote unquote reporter of the scene. Thank you. 90% of Thank what you, you say is dog shit, but the 10% when it hits, it whoof. It's good. Can, do, can you can you on stream? Can you bring up my profile? I want oh, to just look at just He's look at my just look at my pin just look at my pin tweet just look at my pin tweet and it, I think it summarizes what exactly um, I do. Yeah, uh, I mean this is the, this is December. The pin, the, the, the pin tweet says it all. I think. <laughs> <laughs> this guy this is a shit posting account 100 percent. he's also plugging his twitter right now i i respect it we're in there i feel like that's fair i feel like yeah, it's yeah. fair and also i don't owe you five gifted now you now you actually have to sub to me that's no the now. that's actually fallen hasn't been signed so if fallen doesn't get signed uh, you're fucking out i never guy. said that fallen was 100 percent getting signed i said uh, that they were <laughs> I'm just saying, bro. I'm just saying. i i would i would honestly be surprised um 
I would be shocked if Fallen does not get signed. I mean, there's not, like, if they're going that route, if they're saying we don't want Stu to be the main IGL anymore and we need an op still, there's, like, literally... I can't even think of how, fuck, how many free agent op IGLs exist. Right. I'm trying to even I mean, think, you could, like, I mean, op IGLs exist. You have Cooper is free, and who knows? I love the guy, but what yeah, is I mean, he? you have Vanity. Like, where is he at? Yeah. Vanity is good. Vanity's there. But I know some things rumbling behind the scenes with, uh, I mean, I'm sure you know the things with Vanity, what's going on. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I think I could say, I think I can say some one thing now is that I know that before Gen G decided to reevaluate their roster options heading into 2021, like they were talking with Vanity and Zeppa about. Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll confirm on. it. I'll confirm yeah. that for you. Like yeah. that was like that. I mean, that was the that thing. Was, they were that really was about that. to happen. And then Gen G is like, we're reevaluating all of Counter Strike. So I yeah. think that's, uh, that was, that was what's going on there. there there's your, it your, was, your kind it was of rough. Leap. But that's not happening right now. That's, no, that is that, not just happening. so you guys know that is, he's only talking about it because right now that isn't happening because Gen G is reevaluating CS. But which that was sad. that was the rumor that nobody talked about or released yet, which was Vanity and Zeppo were both targeted by Gen G to go to Gen G. Yeah. So. But um, now, and, and I can say I've talked about it a few times, which is the entire Chaos roster was actually offered an org. In Valorant, they were gonna drop yep. their whole roster to pick up Chaos to keep them yep. all together. But some of the individuals had better individual offers. That, quite frankly, you don't know how you're, you're gonna perform as a team in a completely different. In an game. entirely new game. Yeah. So three but, months of learning how to yeah. get better at CS less than three. No, it uh, it'll be interesting, and then we'll see what happens with EG. I think they're still in the game. I don't. I don't. I'm. It makes me nervous how little that that's being that is happening with them. But, that org in um, general, I just feel like is like, I'm not trying to throw shade, but they really. Don't I don't want to throw like, shade. I they're, think they're, they're on the back foot, bro. They gotta get it in fucking gear. I feel like for most of their teams, they don't do a good job of pushing anything. Like, let's go I as many months as you are years. Like, I don't I care what game they're in. Like, they need to. Like, EG is a fucking legendary org if you're a boomer like me. Like, literally, the guy that made your fucking org, run, you know, runs my management company. Like. <laughs> like bro fucking please take care of that brand you know what i mean like please 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 it's such a cool org i would hate to see it go anywhere so yeah hopefully they fucking start promoting their their roster not just their cs roster just really get yeah. in general